Welcome back to Cash Simplified Channel. In this episode, we are going to take a look at how to interpret and analyze your phase two questionnaire. Now, after you have gathered your data and then you have done all your analysis using spreadsheet functions and the database queries and reports, now you need to just summarize them or interpret so that you'll be able to use it in your phase three. So it is better you create a document that says summary of phase two. Now, you create a document and then you create a table having five columns with the first column being the questions, the second column, the options for the question. And then the third column will be the count. That is how many for each. And then the next column will be graphs. If let's say you, you created a graph for that question or you created a query for that question. And then the last one is the interpretation or um, your finding. Now, let's take the first question. Do you know what AI is? That was the question as an example. And then out of the 30 respondents, 18 said yes, they have knowledge about AI. 10 said no, they do not have. And then two also chose maybe. Now, let's say this question, you do not create a graph. So you use the count if. You put the options here, and then here you, you type the answers, you, the count if values. Now, if you have graph, you can also insert a graph. That's not a problem. And then the interpretation. Um, you know, majority of them, which is 18, says they know what AI is. You must link it with your question. You don't have to say majority says yes. Yes to what? You have to be specific. So in this situation, majority, that is 18, says they know what AI is. However, 10 respondents admit they do not know what AI is, and then two are unsure of what AI is. Then when you are done by um, explaining what these mean, then you now have to add your knowledge. In other words, you have to put interpretation to it. So the interpretation is this one. There is still a notable gap in the general awareness. Why do I say this? Because um, out of 30, about 12 people still don't know. So that means there's still people who do not know, um, who don't have idea about AI. So this one, you are going to generalize it by interpreting what um, the values mean. Now, the second part, do you think AI is currently being used in education? That was the question. And then 22 said yes, three said no, and then five said unsure. Now, how do we interpret this? Most respondents believe AI is already in use within education, showing awareness of its integration in education sector. Because 22, that is majority, think that AI is being used in the education sector. That means there's general awareness of AI integration in education sector. This one, you could have put a graph. So here I use maybe the pivot table values or you can also use the frequency values and then you put them here, and then you interpret it. Now, the third one, are you aware of AI tools like ChatGPT, Grammarly, or AI matching systems? Out of this, 20 said yes, and then 10 said no. Now, 20 respondents, which is two third majority, are familiar with specific AI tools. So here, or you can say 20 respondents are aware of a certain AI tools, which shows there's a growing exposure to AI tools. That means who shows uh, more people having knowledge about AI tools or more people making the use of AI tools in education sector. And then the next one, do you think AI to assist with schoolwork is ethical? So 
this question was asking about ethical use, whether AI being used in the school work is ethical. Now, eight said yes, five said no, and then 17 said depends on how it's used. These are the options. Now, how do we interpret this? Most, that is the, always we start with the most, most of them says it depends on its usage, reflecting um, that is, uh, what do you call it? People not being, or people have concern about the AI being used, how it's being used, whether you use it in a proper manner or in other way. So basically, majority believe that um, it will depend on how the AI is being used. That is people's um, opinion about this question. And then have we used AI tools completing assignment or project? Yes, there were 13 who said that, and then 17 said no. Now 13 admit that using AI tools uh, for completing assignment, um, they have used it before, and then 17 said they have not used it before. So it suggests that um, there's a glowing role in academic tasks, despite its unethical or ethical uncertainties or concerns. So in this situation, because 17 do, are not or have not used before, but 13 have used it, that means um, people are now making use of AI in completing their tasks, despite what we are talking about as unethical or unconcerned about the AI. Right. So basically, you have to do this, and then you make sure that you answer all the questions. You answer all the questions. It could be graphs. Now, here, you can put your graph here, and then you interpret it. Then <clears throat> let's look at the scale one. On a scale of one to 10, how confident are you that your school project, um, your school protect your data when using AI? Now, when you use this question, you um they, because they were numbers, you calculated average. Now the average, let's say the average was five point two. Five point two is in the middle. <clears throat> That's the median. So the confidence of uh, people thinking that the, the the school protect their data when they use the AI system is moderate, or because they is is in the middle. It's not high and it is not low. Now, how do we interpret that? Because many respondents fall within um, four and six. That is why it's 5.2 on that scale, reflecting some kind of a trust issues. So meaning because it's in the middle, it's, it's balanced, people still have some trust issues that school might be having, uh, or maybe they might not be protecting their data when they use the AI system. Now, do you believe that AI could be biased or unfair in marking system. And this question, let's say you use queries by using aggregate function. So you use snipping tool to take a screenshot and then you put it here. Then normally you see count of. Now, then you interpret them. It is similar to using count if in spreadsheet. 19 respondents believe um, bias is possible, indicating concerns over fairness in AI assessment. So basically, this is what you must do to interpret all your questions. You have to use this one to interpret all the questions from your questionnaire and make use of the graphs, make use of the queries as well, and then also the count ifs. When you are done, these ones here, this interpretation will be used for your phase three. In other words, phase three, you will put it under the um, survey data analysis because you have done majority of the work for your phase three. Now let's move straight to phase three, what you need to do. And that will be our next lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to, your, uh, to this channel and then you get more of these videos. Thank you for your time.